the new business general discussion, potential review of Johnson County Public Library budget. Come on down. Director of the Johnson County Public Library. And um, I'm here to sort of uh, hopefully help you in a, in a piece of education this evening. Uh, our library board meets for the first time um, basically on the operating budget tomorrow night. But um, there is a potential that we will need to work into your process for reviewing budgets uh, as a consequence of Senate Bill 1. And I know that you all know what that means. I was told I didn't have to explain it a lot. I thought what I'd share with you, first of all, is just a, a map that shows um, where the locations of the county library system are and um, additional information that goes along with it. At the same time, I'll start around a um, just a, a quick review of the legal part. And I'll, this is a repeat of what I sent you today. Um, so that um, I will try to make this brief, but I know I, I don't want to short change uh, either your part of the process or potentially what this will mean for the library. Um, as a result of Senate Bill 1, for the first time in the history of public libraries in Indiana, we uh, have the potential of being subject to fiscal review on our operating budgets. Currently, our bonding um, process is done like any other unit of government. We go out before the voters and, and have a petition remonstrance period for their input. Um, we have a library capital projects budget for which we actually um, get three cents a year. That is reviewed by the county council. Um, but this particular ordinance, um, or Senate Bill 1, has an impact on IC6 dash 1.1 dash 17 dash 20 that I have on the second page of this handout that says budget timetable. And under that, um, this is how the law is still coming out on the internet, but it's, and so it's not showing the change that's been made. But if you look in section um, 20A2, uh, you'll note there, well actually it's in B, I'm, I'm sorry, in uh, 2B that um, in years up until this year, public libraries and school corporations that had appointed boards were not subject to review. Um, due to some uh, unhappiness with a couple of libraries in the state, um, some of our senators saw uh, it in their purview to make this change. Um, what, it, what it does, and it means for us that we come before the city council because we were originally a city library. The history of the Johnson County Public Library is basically in the 60s when the federal government was offering money for expansion. Franklin thought the um, possibility of giving service to the entire county and so took upon what was at that time called a, a, a contractual library agreement with all parts of the county, namely the city of Greenwood, the city of Edinburgh were served, and, and so the Franklin Library took on the rest of the county. Over the time we've merged, we've become a county system, and the, the map sort of shows you our locations and the communities that we serve. So it does seem sort of an irony of this law that we are coming to you when the, the residents of Franklin represent only about 20% of the people that are served by the county library system, but it's just probably something that will get cleared up. But um, we feel like that we want to work with you. We hope that you want to work. I know you want to work with us. It, it seems just another thing on your plates when I hear you talking tonight about all the salary resolutions that you have to do and all the other budgets. But it appears after having our hearing this past Thursday with the State um, Department of Local Government Finance that the library is going to be in a situation where we will have to advertise over 5% simply to get the 4.7, 4.9 that we have a possibility of receiving. We, we are a unit of government that has been experiencing an average growth of 6 or 7% with the forecast being this year that may not happen simply because of the, we're being asked to look at assessed values at a 10% decrease. I don't know if that's what you're being told as well, Janet, but that's what the county unit of government we're being told that our assessed value is very likely to go down. Um, the impact on this is going to be that we cut our budget last year by 10%. We will have to cut this year's budget by 10%, and we will probably have to cut next year's budget by 10%. So 
it's not like we're out overspending money. It's it's really just what's happening to all units of government, particularly as a result of Senate Bill 1. And the board feels like, our library board, myself, we do not feel like we would be doing our job for the, the um, people that support and use the library and those citizens who are, are learning more about the library all the time if we did not go to our maximum levy. So um, the consequence will be if we, if tomorrow night when the board reviews the final operating budget and does decide and in a preliminary discussion they have discussed that at least an advertisement we will go above the 5%. If I understand our library council, B.J. Duffy, and the state boards that are advising us, then we will need to come back somewhere in your budget process and ask you for an approval of our budget. Um, I, what I'm here tonight is sort of answer any questions, um, you know, find out from you what kind of information you would like myself, the board, to be bringing forward to you, what, what times you would like us to do that. I know in talking with Janet and Steve, and I, Norm and I talked about this last fall and hoped it wouldn't happen, but it has. Um, we were thinking we would just come back at the September meeting and ask for your approval. We know, though, that, that because this is so new, if you wanted to come in and make a presentation as your other departments would, um, we would be happy to do that. I'm just sort of here to get some feedback from you tonight, um, take some notes and questions that maybe I've not been able to explain, and um, get you additional information. So.